In this video we're looking at Reynolds number and the difference between laminar and turbulent flow. So when water or any fluid is flowing very slowly through a pipe we often get something called laminar flow. So laminar flow is occurring when we've got very slow moving fluid. And what characterises laminar flow are two main things. First of all, that particles or water molecules in that flow will always travel in straight lines. So if we imagine a series of water molecules across our flow, if this flow is laminar, these particles will always stay along a straight line and will flow smoothly along that straight line. So what we will be getting is little or no movement across the pipe. So all of our velocity component is in the primary direction and there's no transfer of, of mass between the different layers of flow. All of the particles in this pipe will stay in line. As well as the flow being smooth with the particles all staying in line, we also have a velocity distribution like we described in the last video. So we have a velocity distribution that looks a bit like this. So again, like we said in the last video, what we have in laminar flow is zero velocity at the wall. We have the maximum velocity in the centre of the pipe and we have a continuous gradient as we go from the wall to the centre of the pipe where the viscous forces between the particles mean that the reduction in velocity at the wall from friction is being continuously translated through the pipe until we get to the maximum velocity at the centre line. So this profile is actually parabolic, so you can use a parabolic function to describe the distribution of velocity in laminar flow. When we increase the velocity of the flow, there'll be some point where the flow becomes turbulent. So turbulent flow contains chaotic eddies. So our particles don't stay in line anymore. They now are being transported in three dimensions by these swirling turbulent eddies that move around the pipe. So the flow is far more chaotic and we've got velocity components in all three dimensions of the pipe now. So our particles in our pipe are going to be swirling all the way across the pipe. What that means for the velocity distribution, this chaotic movement of our particles, is if again we imagine uh, our particles across the flow, so we have particles in a line across the flow, Because we now have these chaotic uh, swirling eddies that are moving particles all across the flow, the particles won't stay in line. They'll be moved all over the place by these swirling eddies, so the particles won't stay where they started. They'll be thrown all over the pipe by the turbulence in the pipe. So what that does to the velocity distribution is it means that these particles are no longer just experiencing the velocity on the line in which they were starting. They're now experiencing a whole range of velocities as they're moved across the pipe continuously. And what this does is it effectively averages out the velocity profile. So we still have zero velocity at the wall and we still have a gradient of velocity, but now the velocity profile is far more flat because we've effectively had an averaging process because these particles are experiencing a whole range of velocities as they're being moved across the pipe by this turbulence it gives us a velocity profile that's far more uniform and flat. So we, what we've said so far is that slow f laminar flow, all of our particles stay in line and we have a parabolic velocity profile. For turbulent flow, where the flow is more quick, we have chaotic movement of our fluid, which leads to a much flatter velocity profile. We can ask how do we know whether it's going to be laminar or turbulent? And the answer to that is the Reynolds number of the flow. So the Reynolds number of the flow is the velocity of the flow times the diameter of the pipe 
over the viscosity of the pipe. So this is our Reynolds number and this will tell us whether the flow is going to be laminar or turbulent. What this number is doing is a dimensionless number and it's quantifying the ratio of the inertial forces of the flow. So these terms on the top are giving us the inertial forces. The ratio of the inertial forces to the viscous forces So the number is quantifying the ratio of the inertial to the viscous forces. If the viscous forces are dominant, the flow will be laminar. If the inertial forces are dominant, the flow will be turbulent. So when Reynolds number is below 2000, then the flow will be laminar. So what that means, if we put a disturbance in the flow, so if we put, say we put a pin into the center of the flow, and we had a particle moving through our laminar flow and it hits this disturbance and it starts to move and swirl because the viscous forces are dominant they will eventually dampen out that swirling and the particle will return to moving in a straight line so because when Reynolds number is below 2000 viscous forces dominate the viscous forces will always dampen out uh, perturbations in the flow that could lead to turbulence if Reynolds number is somewhere between 2000 to 4000 then we are in the stage where there's a transition between laminar and turbulent flow so if we introduce a disturbance into the flow between Reynolds numbers of 2000 and 4000 what's now going to happen is as our particle hits that disturbance it's going to start to move we might get small scale turbulence forming but eventually the viscous forces will dampen out that turbulence and the particle should go back to travelling in a straight line and going back to laminar flow. For turbulent flow, when Reynolds number is more than 4000, so RE is more than 4000, then if we put a disturbance into the flow, we're always going to get fully developed turbulence. So that disturbance will disturb our, our flow and eventually turbulence will just grow and grow until we have fully developed turbulence in our flow. So a really important parameter in the Reynolds number is the length scale of the flow which for pipe flow is the diameter. The reason that's really important is because the diameter of the pipe D is actually uh, operating as a limit to the turbulence. So the turbulent eddies can't be any bigger than the pipe's diameter. So the reason that, that D is a really important parameter in the Reynolds number is because that's, that's governing how big our turbulence can grow. So the bigger the diameter, the bigger the turbulent eddies we can get in our pipe. So if Reynolds number is below 2000, the flow is laminar, particles stay in line, the velocity profile is parabolic. If we get a disturbance in the flow, then that disturbance will be damped out. Between 2000 and 4000, if we introduce a disturbance to the flow, then that will start to develop into turbulence, but will probably be dampened out again. Reynolds numbers above 4000, if we have a disturbance in the flow, then that will propagate into fully developed turbulence. So actually, if we have no disturbance in the flow, then the flow will always be laminar. So actually, uh, independent of Reynolds number, if there was no disturbances at all, the flow would always remain laminar. But what we're saying when we say that it will be turbulent at above 4000 is when we have a disturbance that will, when Reynolds number is more than 4000, that will propagate into fully, fully developed turbulence. In practical terms, we don't actually need to introduce a disturbance because in the real world, imperfections in the pipe wall or even just vibrations from the external world will be enough to create that disturbance. So actually, when we get above 4000, we have disturbances almost by definition because uh, discontinuities in the pipe wall or imperfections in the pipe wall will act as the disturbance that will create our turbulence. So in reality, whenever we get Reynolds numbers above 4000, we would expect to see turbulent flow. So we can have a go at working through an example of how this would apply. So we've got an example here where we have a pipe with a diameter of 24 millimeters and we're putting a flow down that pipe of one liter per second and we're asking what is the flow regime. So what we need to do 
is considered Reynolds number, which is the flow velocity times by the pipe diameter divided by the kinematic viscosity of the fluid. So that's the equation we're going to use. So our velocity, we're not given the velocity in the question, but we're told the flow is one litre per second, which is the same as 0.001 metres cubed per second. And we're told that the diameter of the pipe is 24 millimetres, which is the same as 0.024 metres. So we know from continuity that the mean velocity is going to be the flow over the area of the pipe. The flow is 0.001 metres cubed per second. We're not given the area, but we're given the diameter, so we can work out the area as pi r squared. So our diameter divided by 2 squared gives us a velocity in the pipe of 2.21 metres per second. So now we have everything we need to plug into Reynolds number to see what the Reynolds number for this example is. So the velocity is 2.21 meters per second, we've just worked that out. The diameter is given as 0.024 meters. The kinematic viscosity for water at room temperature is about one times 10 to the minus six meters squared per second. So that gives us a Reynolds number for this example of 53051. So if we think back to the start of the video where I said that if Reynolds number is more than 4,000, the flow is turbulent, this is a lot more than 4,000, so this flow is going to be turbulent. So what we've done is taken the parameters we were given in the question, the flow rate and the diameter of the pipe. We've worked out the velocity. We've put those terms into the Reynolds number equation to get the Reynolds number. We've seen that it's more than 4,000, so that tells us that the flow is going to be turbulent. We could ask the question, what is the maximum flow in this pipe that would give us laminar flow? So it might be that we're doing a, a design calculation where we want the flow to be laminar, and in this pipe with a diameter of 24 millimetres, we might want to know what is the maximum flow that will give us laminar flow. So we know that RE equals UDV, so what we're saying is RE must be 2000 or less, and that's equal to our velocity times our diameter over viscosity. So the velocity, the maximum velocity that will give us laminar flow is going to be 2000 times our viscosity over D, just rearranged this equation. And if we plug in the numbers, so we know that our kinematic viscosity for water at room temperature is 1 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared per second. Our diameter is 0.024 meters. That tells us that the maximum velocity to give us laminar flow is 0.083 meters per second. Then to work out the corresponding flow to that, we know that flow Q equals UA. We've just calculated U. A, again, it's going to be pi r squared, so r is our diameter over 2 squared, gives us a flow of 3.77 times 10 to the minus 5 meters cubed per second and we can put that into liters per second by timesing it by a thousand so 0 0.0379 liters per second and that is for this given pipe diameter the maximum possible flow flow rate that would give us laminar flow so in this example, we've taken what we were given of, as a flow rate and a diameter, we've worked out the Reynolds number and we've shown that the flow is turbulent because it's above 4,000. We've then worked backwards to show what the maximum possible flow in this pipe could be to give us laminar flow.